So look, Beverly has stepped up and told Maggie to settle down. We don't need you out here to guard us. What in the world, Maggie? You're messing with the wrong guy. You're messing with the wrong girl. You're messing with the wrong girl, Maggie. And now you're gonna get me hurt. Maggie, <laughs> Maggie, you don't come to me, baby. You started it, Maggie. You started it. You're messing with the wrong girl, Maggie. You better run. Maggie, you might want to jump on top of that trailer, seriously, but do not come to me. Oh, boy. Here she comes. All right, Beverly, no. Beverly, Beverly, leave her alone. Beverly, you're not going to mess with Maggie. <laughs> well, she almost kicked me. Beverly, you stop. All right, so no matter what stance you take on an issue, I say an issue, it shouldn't be an issue, but on a position, no matter what position you take on any topic, there's always going to be somebody who's going to, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just funny to me. All right, so obviously mother nature, God, our higher, higher power plans and accommodates animals for weather like this. We all know that most animals, especially animals in nature, they don't have shelter. They have to kind of resort to this right here is their protection from the elements. And so a lot of people who say you should not be putting blankets and things on your horses and donkeys in cold weather, they understand that mother nature's already provided as much blanket as that horse or donkey needs. And I totally understand that, you know, I, we, and we do as a sanctuary, a forever home for the babies. We try, we do, we try to make the, um, the animals have as close to a natural environment as possible. Granted, we give them snacks. Okay. Granted, we give them their favorite snack right now is animal crackers. And oh my God, if I never see another goldfish cracker again, I would be okay with that. Uh, but what we don't do is put them in cages stacked up along and, and just call ourselves a sanctuary and a rescue and have them, you know, we offer them a natural environment until you see things like this. And a lot of folks are going to be very, very anti-horse blanket. And let me explain to you why. Before you uh, get on either side, I'll let you think for yourself and you can decide. And, and, and I am totally fine with folks disagreeing. We've always said that. And we stand by that, that it's okay, guys. It's okay. We can agree to disagree. That was something I was taught a long time ago, and, I, and, and I'm going to stick to it. So listen, folks who say you should not put blankets on your horses, here's, here is the reasoning behind it. I'm not going to explain this near as well as some of the guys have explained it to me, but I'm going to give it a shot. Whenever you take something like this horse blanket and begin to put it on your horse during cooler temperatures, the horse's natural uh, response to weather changes because now that horse realizes he has something else to protect him from wind and rain and, and cool temperatures. And so naturally his body wants to regulate at a certain temperature, right? And so all of a sudden he'll stop producing as much of a natural protectant. So in this case, he may, his hair may get thinner. Or in this case, he may, you know, he may lose some hair. Or Maggie, you all better be sweet. Excuse me, folks. And so there's a number of reasons how mother nature is going to always make sure that the animal maintains its right body temperature. And so when you start adding artificial things like these horse blankets, you can change a whole lot about the horse's natural mother natured type defenses from the elements y'all get what i'm saying you're saying now then on the contrary a lot of folks are saying well wait a minute lester mother nature didn't provide you anything against the cold wind in the form of protection for your hands and your extremities that's why we have gloves that's why you're wearing a, a toboggan cap right now you know for your ears and so it's okay to supplement and provide supplements in the form of, in this case, blankets, and in my case, my toboggan, overalls. And so, 
it goes well so guys now you want to go back into science and so supposedly ancient man who didn't have homes fire and the things that we have today was a very hairy man <laughs> he was a very hairy man okay oh my god this is how the I am not the one to be giving this. I Seriously, I should not be the one talking about it because I don't know what I'm saying. But ancient man was a very hairy man because he too had, he was given the essentials that he needed to survive in, in various climates, right? So what happened was once human beings began to evolve and human beings began to find you know, different forms of shelter and fire and clothing and whatnot, guess what? Now we've become less hairy. And now we are dependent on accessories to keep us uh, protected from the elements. And that's what people are afraid is going to happen to horses and donkeys. Ouchie, if we're not careful. You don't mess with Mother Nature, okay? You don't mess with Mother Nature, and we get that. <sighs> But, at the same time, here comes Lester and other folks trying to squeeze in a little bit of what we do sometimes. We're like, wait a minute. Okay, so, let's take Texas, for example. Mother Nature knows that in Texas... Hey, here, this is going to be crazy. I've never done anything scientific on this, but I bet you it's true. You take a horse or a donkey from Texas... And someone studies the hair com composition of that donkey and horse compared to one in the Dakotas, Canada. And I can almost guarantee you that a donkey or a horse up in Canada or the Dakotas or somewhere that is known for its blistery cold temperatures is going to have a whole different type of hair composition. And that's why, since we almost never get below freezing here in Texas, all of a sudden we drop down to 21 one night, 28 one night. Of course, today, right now, is 28. It was 24 at the coldest, but we add the wind chill to it. So that makes us think that, okay, hold on, our, our donkeys and horses are cold because they're not equipped. They're not built for this kind of weather. So we try to add a supplement. Do you hear what I'm doing here? Do y'all hear how I am going back and forth, back and forth? And so I don't know. So as I stand here right now and I'm looking at our horses that we do have in blankets, we kept them off of our donkeys because they were being foolish last night when we were trying to dress them. Uh, I, I don't know. Here's what I do know. Here's what I do know. Get this. You want to talk about smart? So normally on any given night, our animals will congregate together under... We have a pole, I don't know if you can see it from this distance, a light pole. And the animals like to sleep under that light. Okay, except for nights like last night, when it was extremely cold and there was a, the wind was blowing. Guess where they all went? Into that tree line. They went and they took, walked themselves deep, deep, deep into that, into those, that patch of woods. And so what I know is that they were smart enough to realize that inside the thick woods, they have a whole lot less wind. And when they have less wind, it's not quite as cold because we all know what a windshield does. This might be the most boring video I've ever made. Beverly, thank you. You're, you're, the only, you're really the only bright spot to my video. You and Maggie, and Maggie's over there messing around doing... I don't know really what Maggie's doing, but she's being quite naughty, it looks like. And then, of course, Pablo is over here. Just there, There's really only three things that are making this video worth watching. And at this point, I think I've rambled on long enough. I've actually reached my eight minutes, so I can put an ad. <laughs> I can put an ad in my video, so I, make, I can, might can make a couple of dollars off of it if anyone watches that far. But uh, listen, I do. I do want to read your comments, and I want to know what you think about the horse blankets. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If the temperature warms up to a temperature where it's well, obviously not, not below freezing, as it begins to warm up, we would be foolish to leave the blankets on the horses. Now I'm going to tell you why that would be so dumb. Because people get lazy. And people are like, well, it's going to get cold again tonight, so we'll just leave the blankets on the horses. 
But the problem is it may warm up to 40, 50 degrees. And all of a sudden now those horses are sweating and sweat begins to, to develop under that blanket. Well, when temperatures drop down below freezing again, guess what? Now, not only do you have a cold horse, but you have a wet horse. You have a wet blanket. And guys, I think that we all know what might would happen if you're out in freezing temperatures um, in cold, wet clothing. It's called the pneumonia. And uh, yeah, we try to avoid that, right? Okay. Maggie, go away. Beverly, settle down, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not picking Maggie over you. No, but you can't be mean to Maggie. I'm sorry she nipped at you. <laughs> oh, boy. That was foolish. You don't mess with Beverly. You do not mess with Beverly, okay? Seriously, you don't. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed our little mini talk uh, or maybe our mini lesson on horse blankets, the do's, the don'ts, the what ifs, the no-nos, the definitely no-nos, mother nature, ancient man who was very, very hairy. Yeah, you can't forget about ancient man who was very, very hairy. And modern man who could sure use a little more hair here and there. I will say that again. Modern man who could sure use a little bit more hair here and there. And when I say here and there, I mostly just speak for myself, okay? I mostly just speak for myself. Y'all have a great day. It's cold. I'm getting back up to the barn. And I'm taking Maggie along with me for her own well-being. Let's go. Maggie, you got to be more careful, baby. You got to be more careful. You almost got yourself hurt. You almost got me hurt. Sheesh, Maggie.